Now a few things. First one is that tomorrow, between 2 p.m. to 4 p.m., between 2 to 4, I think a majority of you can stay at home and just very few of you can come to the Shrine Hall to chant the, the King Aspiration Prayer of Samadabhadra because yesterday we already talked about uh, the sister of Ponsogram Buche, Kondrula Ani Medrun. It marks uh, her 19th, uh, per, uh, 19th uh, anniversary of her passing, right before the Sukhavati Dharma Assembly. Not too sure about the exact date anymore, but it usually is uh, the occasion that the Sangha will chant the King of Aspiration Prayer of Samadabhadra in commemoration of the sister of Pansukran Buche, Ani Midran. The tendril is its auspicious tendril because yesterday we just had a quick uh, introduction of her and uh, tomorrow we will have the opportunity to chant uh, the King of Aspiration prayer along with the entire Sangha between 2 to 4. As we said yesterday, she will definitely be reborn in Sukhavati and uh, those of you who make auspicious connections to her will also be reborn in auspicious in Sukhavati as well. So it is of great merit. If you do not have the time to practice all the way from the beginning to the end, at least you can chant the King of Aspiration prayer. I think it's not that difficult. Um, it is to just commemorate Animidran. The, that's the first one. And the second thing is that from the Lamas, the office of the Lamas, they've received a fingernail from Pansagrim Bache. Not so sure. Well, it's from his uh, uh, little finger, a piece of fingernail from his little finger. And uh, tonight, rather, no, uh, on Sunday evening, between 7 p.m. to 12 midnight, there will be an opportunity to uh, pay a pilgrimage visit to, um, to see that uh, piece of uh, fingernail of Ponsu Grimbache. This is something that is uh, from Ponsu Grimbache. If we couldn't conclude the site, if we could not finish the viewing of that uh, uh, relic, then uh, we can extend the time to 2 or 3 a.m. That would be fine as well. But I really request all of you not to inform others, not to inform people outside of Larungar, not to inform people outside of uh, here at all. Do not take the Tibetans to here either, otherwise they could get quite complex. There will be guards, door guards over there to examine uh, people over there. So I really hope that all of you can obey the rules. It will be on Sunday evening. Without any big changes, it will be there. I think it's better to make that announcement a little bit earlier. The third thing is that Tomorrow we will continue with the class on the baskets display because when I looked into the teaching, the Tibetan version is still much more than the Chinese version because the Chinese version could be concluded in three classes, but the Tibetan version is longer somehow. When I looked into the differences when I compare the two versions, it looks like there are quite a bit of differences. Not so sure if the Chinese is missing a big passage, not entirely sure yet, but tomorrow 
we will still have a class. Initially, tomorrow, day after, and uh, the day after that, we will have the Shrangama Sutra. But I think this time, let us conclude the basket display first, and then we will continue with the Shrangama Sutra. Again, I'm not too sure about the differences, what the differences are yet. It is that in the afternoon, I realized that it will take me about two or three days to conclude the oral transmission of uh, uh, the basket's display in Tibetan version. In the past, I thought that there is not too much of a difference back in, 19, uh, back in 2016. I think I made a comparison. Well, whose cell phone is that? The cell phone beside the window. <coughs> so tomorrow, please bring the book, the basket's display, and not the Shrangama Sutra. Now I'll give you the oral transmission. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Uh, <laughs> Nam <laughs> Shinjigi <coughs> What you can but in Rabbit's Gum Tony, Chance of Saint Hardriban number Serra Driban number Serra Larry give Chance of Saint Watchimbo. Share is the dear Wombo, you get reparing her deed, Yarmo Chimmon, the Chul of Jim Bruno, Jimmy Badan, Kishan Tarmo Jenny Limbersum, Umar no Pame Hong, the Jen Mata, the Sar number three do you so, Tangins and Tito Jim Driban number Serra. Lamatotum Chodnam Pagbayan, Malag, Mam Pagbano, Mayano, Rigiva Chuting, 
Tayata Zibatan Tetra <laughs> Raki Ringolandro, Tony Tirmon Jompe, the Lichamber Chanty Chamber Mumbers on in Codo, Retiver, Varva Comotin of Chanter Sanguate, Testa, Tony, so Retiver Tinitini, Rigerbozi, Shava, Varvicon, and of Chanter Sangua, Shermertoba, Yachok Tontoma, Anne de Wombur Gerbo, Varvicon, and Alhi, Sergi, Richard, Yacha Yoto. Je <laughs> Uh <laughs> Lalana Pamaraga go, Lalana Marata Maracato go, Lalana Shirti go, Lalana Lali Gerbutis Tavata yo, do, Rere, Jan Semo Gatra, yo, the Ruchimbos, not so you can bash them zibi. She be not so bany the Yotogon at a horse, say more tater lat, as at a nate, tater the temperature of our con. Sernium John Veranzon Dog, Sim Toma Kibijan to Sanga Tedor Jan, Tomba, Nyet Tom, Samami Pala Semte, Jimar Dunger Lokia Dor Gavadon, Nava Nava, Chibi Dunger Lo, Dugjam Zava, Lam Jarzam, Dugjam Zava, Dom Chapano Dunger Lo, Termi Bartipano Dunger Lo, Tugno Bondiba, Division Kibano Dunger Lo, Sim Jenditor Jan Ton Kirudo, Kibano Dunger Lo, Jit Tavalila. Tu 
Barbadon, Don Adam, Cherumbeba, Don Lokton, Lokton, Jumjurta, Shete Varu Conte, Don Ritia Boja Tontama, Yodo, Ritia Botet, Tamsi Jorum Bocher, Nap, then if she bagu, Ritia Botet, La Sian Hosum, Namba Nato, Bayo, De Dombona Mati, Marbodon, Lomano Seretan, Lipsibago, Rumboci, Rumboci, Namba Toma, Don, Yan Namba Nato Baton of Shion, Jobendon, Nacha Dom Tron, Chimbo. Bon, je dans ces motos, dans ces motos, j'ai pas d'autre, 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 j'ai This time they bat on TV Ravadan, this time they bat on TV Ravadan, Shandar Jebat on Churma, the Shoma, the Chutan, Lambi Batan, Bichur, Nabatamata, Pansander Marti, Div, Jabat number, Sir, Varbo Kumoti, Tavato, Sendam Chitama, Varbo Kumo, Jams and Gijar Pojishavaji Yoti, Varvi Kumoti, Nayan, Hosta, the Gatri, Jerton Yoto, Varvi Kumoti, Rutu, Rutu, Jerton, Rutu, Jerton Yoti, Rumboche, Nazo, Jambay Yoto, Gumma, Nazo. Yo do ri jer bo te dala yan hon sum ji ho sum ya cho tong ta ma yo do zan den ji xiang ya cho tong ta ma yo do xi ri xiang ya cho tong ta ma yo do wa ri gong de na du ji li xi ba ji xiang wa ri gong de na xi dong ren bo ji li xi be kan wa zhe ba ya cho kan wa zhe ma ge chu ge chu ge tong yo do ma ti dong ta ji dan de dong ma ti ge se mo do xian Donoxian, Jerim Chanoxian, Dava Jindos, and Rumbochina, nor she did. Come back to Mana de Nasir Gitki, Rumboche, Yons of Tripan, but not so bad. A Dabra Shiba of Yodo, come back to Mana, the Jones of Urbans, I'm a London, Tomba, Georgian, Chunchat by on your day in the Tati, Parodushin by Trick Tamba, on Zati in the Tati, Jim B. Parodushin by. Stomberns at certain depart of Jimbert, Tomberns and Zobi, part of the Jimbert, Tomberns at Sunji, depart of the Jimbert, Tomberns at Nothing, depart of the Jimbert, Tomberns at Shirk, depart of the Jimba Stomberms at the Testavans and along now, maybe more namely. Chur number not so bad of the decent chat or theatre rig give a tater or chance of some house and watch him bomb of a shiny so on board who call. Theatre and Zeta Sergio Silla count of Chimbi Lad, no flood on no gendon, Hamay and Dantra Zadon, Mogam Chadon. Don't want you to be able to get the money 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 to get Let's him join what in a tea, tea, Targon, me or don't have a baba, a tea, tea, tarry, pombo, and drove, or give a tea, tarry, and so on, so much in Bombo Bashan is the one bushing, give the banner, they don't draw. They need Jonathan, the Jabat number seven, the Kutch of Sword, or Jonathan, they were working with day on Mamchi, but love some Jonathan, they keep got Sarah Rig, give a day on me, Pama, they don't me by you know, they not Jonathan, the Jabat number seven, the Kutch of Sword, or Jonathan, the Shanson. Chance of San Hua Shan is the one bomb chugum, Jund and the Jeep Gaps are a chance of San Hua Shan is the Jew one bomb city, said Yasila Candonetta, and I left out on Chapshawa, don't him to Shawa, don't want you. Chimbur, Jew, don't cheat the long time be sure go, then if Chance of Sons on Chimbo Papa Shan is the one bomb. Goes there, Mumbo, don't say what on Marwood, don't care what on Shiki Cato, don't Mirgi Cato, Chicato, they don't say that it's had. Still can't go on the name, John Dundee, La Lansom, of course, to Rame be same Johnny Rachimbon as home. Sony Jan, to Rame be same Johnny Rachimbo, server, your dot, it's in the Sergio Silo Conda. Steve Zombo Shon Richard in the Sergio Silo Conda, Testa with his serum bochi. Snow Richard in the Sergio Silo Conda, and yet no, then you shan't so on the one Jimbo Bashan is a womb. Deva Jen Jitendi Kamne, Shon Tay. Come then, you didn't need shown to Zeta to Silla Khan, Calavar de Los Gones, and Gin Zeta to Silla Khan, Calavar de Chunto Quayim Posalilo. Now, Bodhisattva Valakateshwar is coming. Finally.
Let us begin our class on the Mahayana Sutra, the Sutra of the Baskets Display. Today we will begin the fourth volume. The volume usually shows that the content is after the volume and then chapter is above or before. In our previous class, we had already studied the different introductions of the various pores of Avalokiteshvara. And the Tathagatas within the pore of Avalokiteshvara also praised the qualities and merits of the Mani Mantra, the six-syllable mantra. For example, if you were to carry this mantra with you, and then a great numbers of sentient beings would be benefited, and so on and so forth. And now, Savani Varanavish Kambin said to the Bhagavad, saying that, Bhagavad, I wish to hear the six syllable Mahavidya. He's saying that I'm sure there's the inconceivable yoga and immeasurable and highest dhyana. Indeed, if you were to receive the six syllable mantra, it would be easy for you to attain dhyana. People who chant the Mani Mantra usually have very good practice themselves. And in a very short period of time, they would be able to attain nirvana of uh, supreme enlightenment, which is the entranceway into liberation, which pacifies desire and hatred. The Tibetan translation over here omits which pacifies desire and uh, hatred, but in Tibetan, uh, in the Tibetan translation, it doesn't have it in the other uh, translations it does, which fills the treasury of the Dharma. Many people knows uh, many people know how to chant the Omani Bame Hong since a very young age. It may seem to be simple, but people who can chant it can be definitely considered as quite meritorious. Lots of the seniors over here, especially in Tibet, they would complete um, hundreds of uh, millions of money mantra, they would accumulate um, the hundreds of millions of it. For my family, my father accumulated, and my father has the tendency to chant more of the um, Guru Rinpoche's mantra, and my mother prefer the Avalokiteshvara mantra. I don't quite remember the exact numbers that they've accumulated throughout their whole uh, their their whole life. Not sure if they've accumulated over hundred million. Anyhow, over here it says that which fills the treasure of the Dharma, which uproots samsara and the five existence, which brings the, the hell and afflictions to an end, which takes on, which takes those who have become animals to a higher existence, uh, which complete the taste of the Dharma and which is imperishable teachings of omniscience. Not only it could liberate the sentient beings, um, even including all the animals and beings in different realms, in hell realm, and uh, uh, so on and so forth. Also, one would be able to fulfill the treasury of the Dharma. They can listen to the supreme nectar like. Dharma teachings, and uh, they would be able to receive the imperishable teaching of omniscience, even if the Buddha would not, even the Buddha with great omniscience cannot expound fully of the merit of the six syllable mantra. And then the Bodhisattva continued to ask. Bhagavad, how can I obtain it? How can I get the oral transmission of the six-syllable mantra? I would offer the four continents filled with the seven precious materials to anyone who bestows up on me the six-syllable Mahavidya. 
跟上面就是粘在一起，可能这样好一点。就是知道这个大藏经有不同的可能对照。The Chinese translation um over here split into the two sentences, but over here I think if it's together it would be better. If we can look into the different versions or editions of the Tripitaka, the Chinese Tripitaka, that would be better. Um, but in the Tibetan translation, what it meant is that if someone could bestow me the six-syllable mantra, then I could fill the four continents with the seven treasures and make that as an offering to this person. And then he continued to say that、uh, Bhagavad, if I could not find a birch bark. Page to write on, nor ink, nor reed pen. I will make ink of my blood. I will slice off my skin to make a page, and I will break one of my bones to make a pen. Bhagavat, I have no concern for my body. The one who bestows it upon me will be my parents, my guru of gurus. 也就是说，这的这个六字真言的话呢，实际上就是对我们来讲非常这个重要。He made the emphasis that the six syllables. Mantra is so important, and he respects whomsoever would bestow this mantra to him, and、uh, just like how he would respect his parents and、uh, respect him as the guru of the gurus. The most important teacher, Savani Varanavish Kambin, demonstrated his eagerness to seek for the teaching of the six syllabus mantra in front of Shakyamuni Buddha. Each of us. Maybe because of our longing to receive the teachings of the six syllable mantra, or this particular sutra, you may have to go through some hardship. For example,、um, without any place to live or without、uh, anything to eat. Well, nowadays I think you should still be able to have enough provisions of food, because we do distribute food to the sangha.、Um, sometimes ghee, sometimes. Oil, sometimes different kinds of grains, rice, and so on. Compared to my time, back in my time, we had to be very strategic in terms of our、uh, food. We have to pay attention to how much、uh, tampa is still left in the bag. And I would get very distracted if、uh, I don't have too much tampa left. Sometimes I consider, well, if I don't go out and buy some tampa, I would be starving. But if I do, then I would not be able to receive the full or transmission. So, compared to that period of time, at least now, we. Would not have to go through that kind of hardship anymore. Though sometimes we do have to go through some hardship, but still it's better. Though everything went through rather smoothly than before, some of our staff members still complained about various kinds of things. I think for these kinds of people who tend to complain a lot, even if they were to be born in the celestial realm of the angels, they would still feel. Discomfort. I think people tend to complain. On one hand, it is because of their oversensitivity, and on the other, it could be because of the lack of merit. Whichever case it is, I think you've already received this Dharma teaching, and you should make the resolve that whatever kinds of hardship、uh, is still worthy to、uh, endure as long as you receive this Dharma teaching. As it is stated over here, one can、uh, use the blood as Uh, ink and then the、uh, then the skin as a paper and、uh, bone as a pen. Of course, we don't need to go through that kind of hardship, but we need to have that kind of resolve. We need to have that kind of eagerness and resolve to receive the Dharma teaching and spread it. Now,、um, the Bhagavat started to tell Savani Varana Vishkamping a story since、um, the Bodhisattva stated and expressed his eagerness of. Receiving the Dharma teaching, then the Bhagavat told a very well-known story of how he had received this Dharma teaching in the past. The Omani Bhame Hon, the six-syllable mantra, may seem to be very simple, but how did Shakyamuni Buddha? 
obtained this mantra at the very beginning. This story had been also told through other sutras and uh, recorded in other sutras and texts, but this one is very touching. Um, the Buddha now told uh, Savanivarana Vishkampan, saying that, Noble Son, I remember going to as many worlds as there are atoms in the world for the sake of obtaining this six-syllable Mahavidya. I honored many millions of trillions of Tathagatas, but I did not obtain it. Not only one or two Buddhas, but innumerable numbers of worlds and um, many millions of trillions of Tathagatas in order to receive the teaching on the six syllable uh, Mahavidya. At that time, I did not hear it from those Tathagatas. At that time, I went weeping to the Tathagata, the Arhat, the Samyaksambuddha, the one with wisdom and conduct, the Sukata, the knower of the world, the unsurpassable guide who tames beings, the teacher of gods and humans, the Buddha, the Bhagavat, Rat, uh, Ratnotama. This Tadagata Ranotama, that is uh, known for the ten titles or have the ten titles. Some people may feel that, well, if Shakyamuni Buddha does not have the oral transmission of this six-syllable mantra, then how did Avalokiteshvara receive these or obtain this six-syllable uh, mantra then? Some people may think in such a way. But after this story, you would probably understand it. At that time, after the Buddha went and weep and uh, uh, weeping to the Tathagata Ratnotama, the Tathagata, the Arhat, Samyaksambuddha, Ratnotama said, Noble son, don't weep so pitifully. People nowadays would say that I'm sorry, I'm going to weep. See, not only you would weep, only also Shakyamuni Buddha had wept. When people weep, and their eyes and nose and uh, mouth all uh, would weep all together. So their expressions go together when they're weeping. And then at that time, Ratnotama said, Noble San, go to the Tathagata, the Arhat, the Samyaka Sambuddha, Padmotama. Let me introduce you to another. Tadakata, who knows the six-syllable Mahavidya. He will give you the teaching on the six-syllable Mahavidya. And then Shakyamuni Buddha then told um, Savanivarana Vishkampin Bodhisattva saying that Noble Son went to the Tadakata Padmotama at the time of hearing the Tathagata um, Ratnotama and his suggestion of visiting Padmotama, now we have a few different names. I think it's important for you to remember who is who, but I'm sure you can because you're very used to watching TV series. So even if there are lots of characters and roles introduced in a TV show, you would still be quite familiar with them. People nowadays sometimes would uh, wash dish and uh, chant mantra and then watch TV series. It seems that they can be extremely multitasked. Well, there are people
whom are well endowed with all kinds of secular wisdom. I remember that he read lots of books as well as watched many Hollywood movies. However, when it comes to the Shakyamuni Buddha's story, the biography of Shakyamuni Buddha, around that time, we had already studied the extensive biography of Shakyamuni Buddha, every time he finished studying it, he would forget all of those uh, storylines or the biography of Shakyamuni Buddha's past lives. When it comes to the secular wisdom, we feel quite, um, uh, we would quite very much admire his storytelling of all the secular stories, but when it comes to the stories of the past lives of Shakyamuni Buddha, he would forget them very quickly. That is really because people's habitual tendencies are so different. Also, another Lama I know, when I just got, re uh, when I just got uh, ordained back in the 80s, when he just got ordained, he couldn't memorize the 37 stanzas of uh, Bodhisattvas. However, he could remember all of those pop songs lyric just by listening to it once or twice. He said that he would wear a headphone and then walking from uh, Toko Tenzin's house to the to the spring that we have over here, and then uh, after coming back and forth, he would be able to remember the lyrics. But he spent a long time in remembering the shlokas of 37 practices of a bodhisattva, but couldn't remember it at all. And then the Buddha said that a noble son, after I parted from uh, Ratmotama, I went to the Tathagata Padmotama, the one that's introduced by Ratmotama. If you remember, I approached the realm of the Tathagata and then arrived there, and bowed my head to the feet of Tathagata Padmotama. I placed my palm together before him and said that Bhagavata Padmotama, I must obtain this six-syllable Mahavidya, which purifies all bad karmas merely by the remembrance of its name, I seek to obtain that which is difficult for a bodhisattva to obtain. The Chinese translation is a bit different over here. It says that this mantra is the mother of all the mantras and the uh, root of all the dharmas. But the Tibetan says that simply by remembering the name of the six-syllable mantra, one's defilements can be purified and can swiftly attain the body. And then he continued to say that I have been to so many worlds in distress. I have arrived here exhausted and without any result. Though that I am already quite exhausted, I had already been to many worlds. In the Tibetan translation, says that I had been to many worlds that are filled with afflictions. And then now with the um, help of uh, Ratnotama uh, Tadagata, I am finally here to meet Tadagata uh, Padmotama to receive the six-syllable mantra. And then the Tathagata Padmotama first praised the qualities of the six-syllable mantra. He expounded on the 12 qualities of the six-syllable Mahavidya by using 12 examples so that um, Savarni Varanavish Kambin Bodhisattva would further long to receive the Dharma teaching, the teaching on the six-syllable mantra. He first said that noble sign, it is like this. As the comparison, I can know the number of atoms, but noble sign, I cannot calculate the accumulation of merit from repeating the six-syllable Mahavidya once. Even if you repeat the six-syllable mantra once, then you would accumulate the merit that far surpass the numbers of atoms. So he didn't really say anything else about um, the requirements or prerequisites of chanting this mantra. He didn't say that you have to enter into the, uh, you have to practice the completion stage or, uh, or the arising stage. As long as you chant even the six-syllable mantra, once 
that merit would have surpassed that of the former example. The Tadakadas are the ones that accurately understands all phenomena. On one hand, it is completely true. On the other, it is um, to demonstrate that the Buddha understands even all of the, the numbers of atoms. It is to further emphasize that the Buddha knows the merit of uh, the six syllable Mahavidya would surpass the numbers of atoms. And then the second metaphor is that in Noble Sun, it is like this. As a comparison, I can count the grains of sand in the ocean, but in Noble Sun, I cannot calculate the accumulation of merit from repeating the six syllable Mahavidya once. This is the second. And then the third example is that Noble Sun, it is like this. As a comparison, a person builds a building that is 100 yujanas high and 500 yujanas wide. Um, in the Chinese translation, it says that if a person were to build a building, but the Chinese translation said that if a deva were to build a building, but I think it's, it's all right as well. So here it says that as a comparison, a person builds a building that is 100 yujanas high and 500 yujanas wide and completely fills it with the sesame seeds. There isn't even a needle-sized hole in the in the building. All the gaps are filled. As its door, at its door, there is an immortal man who never ages. Look at the guard of our shrine hall over here. He had been a staff member and guarding that gate for a long period of time. He's also from my hometown area. But he aged a little bit. Now, this guard is an immortal man who never ages. If every hundred aeons that man takes out one sesame seed, and then I can calculate the time. So there is the specific time that would be used in order to have all the sesames tossed out. There is a limited time, and the Tadagata says that I can calculate the time. The Tadagata knows the time when the building would be emptied down to the floor, but Noble Sun, I cannot calculate the accumulation of merit that comes from repeating the six syllable Mahavirya. Video once. This is the, the third example. And then the fourth example is that Noble Sun, it is like this. As a comparison, if the people in the four continents were all to work at various kinds of agriculture, such as barley, wheat, rice, grain, or black moonbeam, and so on and so forth, in the Tibetan version, it further expounded more of uh, the different types of grains. And then the jujubes, uh, horse gram, and so on, and the Naga kings sent rain at the appropriate times, and those grains grew, ripened, and were harvested. If Jambuvipa were made into one threshing floor, and the grain were the grain was brought into carts, in animal loads, in bundles and baskets, and then being loaded to different carts driven by different animals, for example, by the oxen and by the donkeys, and then made into one big heap in Jambuvipa. At a specific location in Jambuvipa, there is a big heap of grains. When I was little, the farmers and the herders would work in collectives and then 
all the grains would be piled into one large heap so that all the farmers would work collectively to spread them out to um, get the grains dried and then uh, to get the husks out and so on and so forth. Back then, there's not enough food, there's not lots of uh, uh, provisions, but everyone seems to be very happy. Nowadays, though, we have lots of clothing and lots of food, but not everyone would be would look very happy or um, dance and singing. When I was little, though, we didn't have lots of food nor beautiful clothes, but everyone has a big smile on their face. But nowadays, I'm not sure if it's because people ate too much of the expired food or poisonous food or for whatever reason that may be, um, though there are plenty of food and uh, lots of clothing, but people have uh, frowns on their face. But of course, that's just my perception. Um, maybe that's not from what you've observed. The Tibetan translation over here says that once the grains have been put into one whole heap, then the donkeys and oxen would uh, uh, trod on them and then would trod each of the grains so that all the husks would be separated from the actual grain. The dusts would dust and husks would uh, uh, separate from the actual grain. After treaded by the donkeys and oxen, then all of those grains would actually become the food that people can enjoy. So the crops actually become the, the grains that people can, can eat. And then that's being placed together into a heap. The Tadagata then said that, then, noble son, I could count every single grain, but, noble son, I cannot calculate the accumulation of merit that comes from repeating the six-syllable Mahavidya once. The Tadagata says that I can count even the grains, but I cannot count the merit that's accumulated from the six-syllable Mahavidya. This is the fourth. And then the fifth one, the, um, the Buddha said, Noble son, it is like this. As a comparison, in Jambuipa, there are great rivers that flow day and night. What are the rivers then? There are the Sita, Sita River. Sita River is one of the four great rivers that's described in the Wish Fulfilling Treasury. And then Ganges. And then Yamuna River, the Sindus or Indus River. Pakshu and Sutlaj, the Chennab, the Ravi, the Sumaganda, the Himavati, and uh, Godavari. In the Tibetan language, it is uh, Kalasodari. In Sanskrit, that is the uh, direct phonetic translation into the Chinese language. Um, in the Chinese translation, there are the ten names associated with the number uh, with the rivers, but eleven to the Sanskrit and Tibetan. Now, each of these rivers has 500 tributaries. Those rivers, some of them can still be found today and some not, um, because it is said that those are the rivers that existed during the time of uh, the Buddha when he was still at the causal stage. And over here, it says that uh, this river has 500 tributaries. A tributary in the Chinese language is translated as retinues, so the grand river's um, retinues. 
Usually we translate it as uh, tributaries or the branches of the large rivers, but in the Chinese translation, since it says retinues, I think we can sometimes use that particular translation too. Now, day and night they flow into the ocean, and then the Buddha told Bodhisattva, saying that, noble son, I can count each drop in those great rivers. All of the great rivers, the 11 great rivers, and each of the great rivers has uh, 500 tributaries, and the Buddha can count each drop in those great rivers. Sometimes it is really beyond our um, conception, beyond our capacity of uh, um, imagination, really. How can we even imagine to count each of the drops of one river, don't mention about 11 great rivers and the 500 tributaries? And then the Buddha continued to say that I can count each drop in those great rivers, but in Noble Sun, I cannot calculate the accumulation of merit that comes from repeating the six syllable Mahavidya once. Just repeating it once is very simple. Many people would chant the uh, Mani Mantra many times a day. Chanting mantra has already become their habit, so their mouth is constantly moving. It is almost like on autopilot. And Composer uh, Lojo made this observation of me. He said that I, my mouth is constantly moving as if a mouse is eating constantly. I said, well, not just me. In fact, many of our fellow practitioners do exactly the same because they're constantly moving their mouth. If you uh, if you joke in such a way of the Sangha, then maybe in your future life you become a mouse. Of course, I was joking with him. But it really further, um, over here, the Buddha further certified that the merit of even chanting the mantra once would be so vast. Diogo Kinsa Rinpoche constantly would encourage people to chant the six-syllable uh, Mahavidya. And he particularly gave teaching on the beginning, middle, and uh, the end of uh, merit uh, of the sixth syllable mantra expounded by Paturan Buche. That teaching was later translated into English as well. The disciples and the centers that follow uh, Kinsarun Buche would still continuously to chant this mantra, even the Westerners, and there are great numbers of them that would practice in such a way. I hope that our lineage would be able to spread into the different places in the world. Some of the disciples, some maybe you know, maybe not, not so well known, but stayed in the in Larungar for a period of time, they would go to different places of the world and uh, then propagate the teaching of Ponzo Grimbuchin to different places of the world. For example, in Johannesburg and uh, other places, uh, there are lamas that's currently encouraging people to chant the Mani Mantra. Now, the audience over here, let you be the monastics or the practitioners, you're not going to stay here forever, and not everyone will die here, because we shouldn't consider Larungar as a place where people die. On the other hand, because of the pandemic, we didn't have that many bodies sent to the charnel ground, so the vultures are starving. For that reason, we also purchased some uh, beef to feed those vultures so that they won't uh, starve. But if there's no big pandemic and so on, I'm sure the vultures would be fine. They don't need extra bodies to be to get fed. So it is not necessary for you to donate your body after death in Laranga in the Charna ground. But I think what's crucial is to chant the Mani Mantra, to have people chant Mani Mantra around you at the time of death. When I went to Africa, I really felt that if people can sing and can chant the Mani Mantra, that would be so beneficial to them. And they really enjoy singing. They would chant the Mani Bamehon and sing and dance. And we should have that kind of aspiration to plan a virtuous root to the beings living in those areas. 
To practice the mantra is not a high requirement, and you could plant virtuous roots for them. That would be really good, and it's very meaningful. Now, the sixth one is that noble sun. It is like this. As a comparison, I can count each hair on all the four-legged beings, such as herds of oxen, donkeys, buffaloes, horses, elephants, dogs, jackals, goats, and similarly lions, tigers, wolves, deers, monkeys, hares, uh, uh, pigs, and so on, and rats and cats. But noble son, I cannot calculate the accumulation of merit from repeating the six-syllable Mahavidya once. This is the sixth example. The seventh one is that noble son, it is like this. As a comparison, the king of mountains, which is named Vajran Kusha, this king of mountains is 99,000 yujanas high and extends downwards into the sea for 84,000 yujanas. The Vajran Kusha, the king of mountains, is 84,000 yujanas wide on each side. On the side of that king of mountains, there is an ageless, immortal man who once every aeon wipes the mountain one time with a kashika cloth. This part is a little bit difficult to understand, and some parts is omitted in the Tibetan language. In the Tibetan translation, it says that the this ageless man would take one round of the mountain every aeon while wiping with with the kashika cloth, he would wipe this every once aeon. It is similar to the biography of the Sangha. So after every aeon, he would wipe this such a great mountain. And then eventually, this mountain comes to be worn down and vanished. This is so unfathomable, so unfathomable, so inconceivable for all of us to even imagine this. And then the Tadakada says that I can count the numbers of years, months, and days, and even hours and minutes of the time that would take. Let's not even talk about such a great mountain, like the king of mountains, but if we were to take this mountain that we have over here, if an old man were to uh, wipe and uh, clean this mountain every single day with a kashika cloth, how many years and aeons that may take for this old man so that this mountain would be worn down? Don't even mention about the king of mountains by this ageless man. And then the Buddha said that, noble son, I cannot calculate the accumulation of merit that comes from repeating the six syllable Mahavidya once. And then the next one is that, noble son, it is like this. As a comparison, the ocean is 84,000 yujanas deep, and it has an immeasurable expanse extending as far as Vada Vamukha. The depth of ocean, they're not as deep as the ones that's described in the sutra. When the Malaysia Air 370, when the aircraft went missing, the whole world was seeking for the aircraft in the oceans, and the detecting machines doesn't work any further uh, down below certain uh, depth, not even reaching 84,000 yujanas. So the Buddha said that I can even expound that kind of depth, but I cannot count all the um, merit that's accumulated from repeating the six-syllable Mahavidya once. And then he, the Buddha continued to say that, Noble Son, it is like this. As a comparison, I can count the number of leaves in a forest of argawood trees. 
The Arga Wood Tree appeared in many different sutras, such as uh, the Golden Light Sutra, the Parinirvana Sutra, and so on. But according to the Eko Agama Sutra, this is the tree where Kakusanda attained realization. So it's similar to the Bodhi tree to the Shakyamuni Buddha. And the Tathagata says that I can count all the numbers of leaves in a forest of Arga woods. However, I cannot calculate the accumulation of merit that comes from repeating the six-syllable Mahavida even once. And then the next one is that Noble Sun, it is like this. As a comparison, even if all the men, women, boys and girls who live in the four continents were to be on the seventh Bodhisattva Bhumi, all the humans attained the seventh Bhumi. The accumulation of merit that comes from repeating the six-syllable Mahavidya once would, far, would be far greater than the accumulation of the merit of those bodhisattvas. The Chinese translation says that it is of no difference, but the Tibetan says that it is sur far surpassing that of the human beings that all attained seventh bumi. Even simply repeating the six-syllable mantra for once would be more than the merits that's accumulated of all the human beings that attain seventh bodhisattva bhumi. And then he continued to say, the 11th is that noble sign it is like this as a comparison if for a year of 12 months or with a leap month to make a year of 13 months that is to say if one year were to have 13 months and then all the way that we have accumulated an aeon of the celestial beings because the aeon that's calculated in the human realm would be different than that of the celestial realm. This is expounded in the words of my perfect teacher as well as resting the mind. So if we were to count one year that has twelve, uh, has 13 months instead of 12, and then those years makes up a, a, an aeon of the celestial realm, and within that aeon, if it were to rain day and night, Noble son, I could count each drop of rain, but noble son, I cannot calculate the accumulation of merit that come that comes from repeating the six syllable Mahavidya once. Now the twelfth one is that Noble son, it is like this. There is no need to say much, but if, for example, a million Tathagatas like me were to be in one place for an aeon, for an aeon of the celestial beings. A million or ten millions of Tathagatas like me were to be in one place for an aeon of the celestial beings, provided with all requirements, with robes, food, uh, bowls, beddings, seeds, and uh, necessary medicines as well as utensils, uh, still those Tathagatas would not be able to calculate the accumulation of merit from the six the syllable Mahavidya. It means that the Buddhas of one celestial aeon, the a million or ten millions of Tathagatas in one celestial aeon, were to receive an offering from uh, this person who made offering of robes, the food, the bowls, and uh, bedding, seeds, necessary medicine, and utensils, and so on, the Tathagatas could not even be able to calculate. Uh, if the Buddhas would be able to calculate the accumulation of the merit, but they still cannot accumulate the merit of the six-syllable Mahavidya. So it is needless to say that I cannot do so all by myself in this world. 
年年华上如来，就是他，他说呢，就是那更何况说是我一个在。Tadagata says that well, don't even mention about myself. Even the Tadagatas sitting together and then counting the merits of the six-syllable Mahavidya would not be able to count the merit of、um, this particular mantra. Then how can me myself alone calculate the? Merit of this、uh, mantra. So far, we've covered the twelve examples that expound, that illustrates the merits of、uh, this mantra. The next part is it expounded by Shakyamuni Buddha? I'm not too sure. 释迦牟尼佛说是我七定的这种，我这个从这个如定当中这个。Shakyamuni Buddha here says that noble son, I have entered the yoga of meditation through an inconceivable dhyana. This is a subtle dharma, an imperceptible dharma, an unknown dharma. It is the attainment of the ultimate essence. It has been established through the qualities of Bodhisattva Mahasattva Avalokiteshvara's skillful means in methods. In that way, noble son, I too obtain skillful means in methods through the six-syllable Mahavidya. Maybe this is not the Teaching from Shakyamuni Buddha, rather from the Tathagata、um, Padmotama. So he says that if you want to obtain、uh, the that kind of skillful, that kind of skillful means and such a subtle dharma. Then you should abide within the six-syllable six-syllable Mahavidya. That is the mantra of Avalokiteshvara, and then the Buddha continued to say that, noble son, I also wandered through many hundreds of thousands of millions of tens of millions of worlds, and then. 就是最后的话呢，就是到到了这个无量光如来，就是他当时是。In front of the Tathagata Amitava, this is how he acquired this particular teaching. It was that he obtained it through Tathagata Amitava. After he went in front of Tathagata Amitava with the palms placed together, and he wept. The Tathagata wept because of his emotion for the Dharma. 这个呃，就无量光如来呢，就是知道，就是我就是呃，想得到就是这样啊，就是那么。And at that time, Tathagata Mitava, who knew the present and the future, on one hand, Amitava saw my eagerness of requesting for this Dharma teaching. For that reason, he said that noble son who is united with the yoga of meditation, do you desire the six-syllable queen of Mahavidyas? 就给呃佛陀就是刚才无量光佛面前来说说，我是想得到的就是是。And then he replied saying that I do desire it, I do desire it. 渴望就像是就是干渴。I have gone to many worlds in search of the six-syllable Mahavidya Bhagavat, just like a thirsty person seek seeks water. I have attended to many millions of trillions of Tathagatas, but I have not obtained the six-syllable Queen of Mahavidyas. We can. See, he had been to many different worlds in front of many Tathagatas, but had not yet obtained the six-syllable queen of、uh, Mahavidyas. Yet, have not obtained the six-syllable mantra. So he supplicated to、uh, the Buddha Amitava. This. Is the request from the Tathagata Padmotama to Amitava, and then he requested in such a way that may you,、uh, could you please give me this teaching? 
Bhagavat, I am like a lost person. So Bhagavat, could you be my protector, my refuge and support? Be the eyes for those whose uh, faculties are poor. Be the path for those who have lost who have lost the path. Be the parasol for those burnt by the sun. Be like a great sal tree for a great crossroad. Could you be like a, a sal tree or sally tree? I seek with great eagerness for this uh, Dharani teaching, for this uh, uh, mantra teaching. Could you be infinite teachings for those thirsty for the Dharma, be armor for the complete stab stability of the mind? And then the Tadagata, the Arhat, the Samyaka Sambuddha Amitava said to Bodhisattva Mahasattva um, Avalokiteshvara with a voice as beautiful as a cuckoo sound. So in the next part, we will further look at the sutra. I think the next part uh, we will introduce uh, Avalokiteshvara. I would like to share a chanting of uh, Omani Bamehong from a Tibetan nun. In the, Tibet, in the Tibetan area, there used to be a Mani Lama who already had passed. In the biography of Ponsu Rinpoche, there is a mentioning of this Lama. Uh, Ponsu Rinpoche visited him uh, when he was young. That Lama was very well known in the Dokkan area. And he would chant the six syllabus mantra in this particular tune. I would ask you to listen to it, and you can probably also sync uh, with the sound and see if you can follow this tune. <laughs> How to sing it yet? Uh, Anyone with a good voice and uh, sing it for the rest of us? Maybe we can have one from the male song and the other one from the female. If you're not good at singing, it's better for you not to stand up. Any male? No? Female? I think it would be better for you to learn this tune because this tune at the time of uh, herding, at the time of uh, um, circumambulating stuba, 
This is the kind of sound that you can listen to, you, you can hear very often in Tibet. But I don't have a good voice, so I don't really want to sing it right now. For people without a good sound, it's not very pleasant. Anyone? <laughs> Not exactly. Not only you have to sing accurately, the sound has to be very different too. 